Hello, I'm Annabel Brodie-Smith, Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies. Today, we're taking a look at the investment company infrastructure sector. This sector was launched in 2006 and has grown from strength to strength. Infrastructure is now the fourth largest investment company sector. The sector has total assets under management of nearly 9 billion and has a yield of just under 5%. Today, we're joined by the managers of two infrastructure companies. Harry Seekings, Director at Infrared Capital Partners, Investment Advisors to Hickel Infrastructure, which was the first investment company to be launched in March 2006, and Greg Taylor, Co-Portfolio Manager of Sequoia Economic Infrastructure Income, which is the latest investment company launched in March 2015. Right, on to the questions. Infrastructure, it's a broad term. So Harry, what do you invest in? So the first thing to note about Hickel is it makes equity investments in infrastructure assets. Um, it's trying to build a, a portfolio of assets which are positioned at the lower end of the risk spectrum of infrastructure investments. And, and maybe just to say a little bit more about what that is. So uh, we segment infrastructure by different types of revenue. Why revenue? Well, when people think of infrastructure, they think of long-term stable cash flows. And that starts with revenue. So Hickel invests in projects with stable revenue streams. That would include public-private partnerships, where the underlying assets have contracts with public sector counterparties. Um, we also invest in regulated assets. So these are assets with regulatory price controls. So for example, water utilities or um, gas or tra electricity, transmission and distribution companies which are regulated by the likes of Ofwat and Ofgem. And we also invest in um, certain types of assets which have demand risk. Um, so an example of that might be a toll road, for example. So if, if a toll road has a, um, a good, clear track record of stable operations, that might be an appropriate uh, investment for Hickel if, as it looks to build a, this portfolio of infrastructure investments, which is, as I said, positioned at the lower end of the risk spectrum. And just as a footnote for that, why are we so keen on, um, on these types of investments? Well, Hickel's investment proposition is very much about delivering a, a stable long-term income to its investors. And our view is that the, the infrastructure I just described um, fits within that investment proposition and helps to sustain it um, for shareholders. So a very diversified portfolio with different types of infrastructure assets. Yes, I mean, we have, uh, Hickel has, as of today, about 115 investments in the portfolio, so it, it is highly diversified. Um, I'd say that about 80% of that where we are today is, is invested in public-private partnerships, um, about 10% um, in regulated assets, and about 10% um, in, in um, operational toll roads or demand-based assets. So, Greg, what type of infrastructure do you invest in? So the name of the fund that we're investing uh, on behalf of us is the Sec Sequoia Economic Infrastructure Income Fund. Uh, that's a mouthful. We refer to it as SECI, which is its ticker on the London Stock Exchange. And the name of the fund is important because we're looking for income. So we're investing in debt instruments. We don't do any equity investing. And economic infrastructure for us is primarily infrastructure that has demand exposure. So we don't do a lot of availability uh, payment um, assets such as schools, hospitals, that kind of thing. But we're focused much more on assets where the revenues are driven by, by demand. The sorts of assets that we're investing in would be transportation, transportation assets, utilities, and some accommodation projects where there is a demand exposure, such as student housing or healthcare. I think what we like to say is that we're financing not only the infrastructure of today and yesterday, so how you or your parents got to work this morning, um, but also the infrastructure of today and tomorrow. And by that we mean uh, telecommunications, for example, broadband network, uh, fiber optic networks, uh, and data centers. So we have a very broad definition of infrastructure, and we're active across uh, 24 subsectors, I believe, and the fund has made more than 50 assets since we launched in uh, March of 2015. So again, a very diverse portfolio, big yes. definition of infrastructure there. Yes. Now, there's been a lot of demand for these infrastructure investment companies. Mm. Harry, why is that the case? The rise of infrastructure in its own asset class uh, has probably ha occurred over the last 20 years or so. I don't think that is any coincidence that that has mirrored a long-term downward trend in nominal interest rates. Um, so my view I, is that one of the 
attractions of infrastructure, I mentioned long-term stable income, I think the yield that that offers um, to shareholders has become increasingly attractive as nominal interest rates have decreased. And when you think about it, uh, for an investment company like Hickel, at, at its current share price, it's probably uh, it's yielding about 4.7%. Um, so it's a, it's a positive yield, uh, in, in positive real yield. Um, and I think that's attractive um, for investors when they look at alternative places to put their, put, put their, their savings. Yes, now Greg, uh, Sequoia Economic Infrastructure Income is a little bit younger. Why have you seen so much demand for that company? Well, we pay a 6% dividend uh, every, every year, and we've done that, we do that on a quarterly basis. So we, uh, in addition to that, target another 1% or 2% NAV growth. We are investing typically in non-investment grade uh, debt instruments. But I think that performance and the steady income that's available through the assets that, that we've acquired on behalf of the fund uh, has made us attractive as, uh, as an opportunity for investors that are seeking long-term, stable, predictable returns. Yeah, how are you able to provide quite such attractive yields? Again, it's by investing typically in non-investment grade um, assets. The sort of yields that we're targeting, we pay a 6% dividend and with roughly 1% running cost, it means we really need to find assets yielding 7% or higher. So for core infrastructure assets, such as a regulated utility, we will typically be in a, a junior or mezzanine lending position, uh, although the portfolio is a mix of senior and junior debt instruments. Right, and Harry, how are you able to provide that attractive yield? Hickel's IPO total return target was to between 7 and 8% per annum. It's to date, over the last 11 years or so, it's achieved about 9.6%. Um, that can only come from either investing wisely um, in a way which is accretive to the existing portfolio um, and also from, I, I think, from being uh, expert at extracting efficiencies and upsides from your existing investments. So um, delivering outperformance against your base case expectations at the time you make an investment. So I, I would say that the, the income that has been produced has been a combination of delivering our base case but also delivering some outperformance um, by perhaps you know, extracting value from economies of scale or, or, or buying further investments wisely. Right, so Greg, do you think the mm. yield is sustainable? I mean, what happens if interest rates were to rise significantly in the future? Will these companies still be attractive? Our portfolio is very diverse. It is a mix of fixed and variable rate assets. So uh, as, as variable rates increase, or if they do increase, I should say, uh, we will experience higher returns on the variable rate assets in the portfolio. We are continuing to see uh, investment opportunities, and I think that's partly a reflection of having acquired more than 50 assets. We now have 50 different counterparties that have worked with us, if you will, either uh, banks or other institutions selling secondary assets or primary originations where we're working directly with a sponsor. So we are continuing to see opportunities, and, and that's really what makes the case for continuing to raise capital for the fund, because we see opportunities to invest in similar credit quality at, at similar yields to the existing portfolio. Right, and Harry, same question to you. If interest rates were to rise significantly in the future, would there still be so much demand for HICA? Would it be such an attractive investment? Uh, it's a good question, and by its nature, um, we, it's an element of speculation that comes into this. Um, I think one thing I would say is that returns from Hickel's portfolio of investments um, are, are correlated to increases in um, interest rates because uh, a lot of the underlying investments have quite a lot of cash on deposit. Um, to the extent interest rates go up, then the returns on that cash on deposit will increase. Um, and typically as well, interest rate rises are associated with increases in inflation. Hickel's portfolio returns increase as inflation rates increase. Um, Having said that, I think there is a point where if interest rates start to rise, it's possible that the discount rates that are used to value these investments um, in the balance sheet of, of Hickel, but also other um, members of the infrastructure investment company peer group, it's possible those discount rates could start to go up. Um, I would just note, though, that if you look back over history, the 11 years since um, Hickel IPO'd, um, there have been times when um, sovereign, uh, sovereign bonds or government bond yields have been much higher than they are today, and risk premium is much smaller. Um, so that suggests, um, if you look at discount rates in, in, in from that perspective, that there's room for interest rates to increase before that effect will necessarily ripple through into changes in discount rates which are used to value these assets. So I think it's all about what's the relative attraction of, this, of infrastructure um, compared to other investment classes. Um, and certainly for the time being, 
um, as we were talking about a moment ago, we, we see continued interest from investors, including in the current environment, where perhaps there is slightly more expectation of interest rate rises than there has been for the last few years. Yes, although it still looks quite unlikely in the short term. Yes. So in terms of where you're finding opportunities, where are you finding the best opportunities at the moment? And has that changed in comparison to the past? Well, I think certainly the market is a lot more diverse um, than it was, say, five or six years ago. Uh, Hickel went through a phase of finding a lot of opportunity to buy e equity investments in public-private partnerships here in the UK. Um, that market itself is much more fragmented now, so um, there are plenty of other geographies, such as other European countries, North American countries, Australia, where we find opportunity to buy PPPs. Um, and in terms of regulated assets, that's probably a bit closer to home. Uh, Hickel recently made a large investment in a water company here in the UK, and um, I think we've seen other opportunities um, to buy regulated assets recently, and I think we see others in, in, in the future as well. So I, I, it does depend somewhat on, on which part of our, um, our investment strategy we're, we're following. Um, uh, but for the most part, it's, Hickel is still 80% invested in the UK, and although that might reduce slightly in the medium term, we still see plenty in the UK for us to, to look at. Right. And Greg, where are you finding the best opportunities at the moment? So the fund invests in North America, the, the UK and Western Europe, as well as Australia and New Zealand. The largest uh, sector at the moment geographically is, is North America, uh, followed, by, followed by the UK. We've found uh, a number of attractive opportunities in the, in the US and Canadian markets. We do hedge that back to, uh, to sterling, which is the uh, currency of the fund. And we expect to continue to see strong opportunities in the US. There's a lot of pressure to fund infrastructure, as, as you're probably aware, in the US. And so uh, we expect that to continue to probably be the largest exposure. But we are uh, working currently on, on assets in Australia and New Zealand, for example, and we have made investments there. Um, so we expect to continue to see a, a, a broad range of jurisdictions in the portfolio for the fund. I'd like to thank our managers for joining us here today. Harry. Thank you, Annabelle. Greg. It was a pleasure, Annabelle. It's interesting to hear their views on infrastructure, but I'd like to emphasise that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Investment is for the long term, and you need to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you have any doubts, you should talk to a financial advisor. Thank you so much for watching.